Good Erev Shabbat. I'm thinking about you and your family and hoping that you're all safe and well. This Far Torah is being sponsored by Drizel and John Wine in loving memory of Drizel's uncle, Moshe Avadia, Moshe ben Salem Zal, and John's father, Sam Wine, Shmuel ben Akiva Zal. And is also being sponsored by Madeline and Dr. Jerry Eisenberg in loving memory of Jerry's father, Irving Eisenberg, Yitzchak Isaac, ben Zelig HaKohen Zal. May our learning together and connecting with one another be a zchut, be a merit for their neshamot. If you had to chart your life, would it look like one straight line going up? Or would there be a lot of squiggly lines with ups and downs along the way? Madeline Levine is a psychologist with a focus on raising children. She lectures all across the country and has posed that question to over 10,000 people from all walks of life. And in an article, she notes that 90% of the audience consistently sees themselves as having a squiggly line charting their life. Yet that doesn't stop parents from thinking that their children will take a straight line approach with only successes. And when that doesn't happen, disappointment ensues. Dr. Levine notes, however, that in reality, the squiggly line is a greater path to success than the straight one. Our Pasha resonates with us because it's all about major ups and downs, turbulence and changing times in response to the systematic corruption in society. God brings a flood to destroy the world, saving only Noach and his family. Noach is described in the opening Pasuk as a tzaddik and a tamim, as righteous and complete, as walking with God. And this is reflected in the fact that several times in the parsha it relates that Noach followed the command of Hashem exactly. Yet after the flood, things go awry, as Noach seemingly loses focus and is suddenly unable to adhere to God's command. Listen to what happens. Hashem instructs Noach, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and their wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you, of all flesh, birds, and cattle. And be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. Noach has given three commands. The first is to leave the ark in male-female pairs. The second is to actively bring the animals out of the ark. And both of these commands constitute preparation for the third command, which is to repopulate the world in the new era. What is Noah's response? As Rabbi Hanoch Waxman points out, Rabbi Waxman was my rabbinic predecessor in the Albert Einstein Medical School and the fellow alumnus at Gush. So Rabbi Waxman points out that Noah failed at all three. Because the Pusik says, and Noah and his sons went out and his wife and his son's wives departed. Every beast, every creeping thing, every bird and whatever creeps on the earth went out of the ark. So instead of Noah leaving the ark along with his wife and his sons leaving with their wives, he leaves in the company of his sons first and then his wife and their wives leave. And likewise, Noah is not depicted as bringing out the animals. They're left behind and seem to emerge by themselves without the help and assistance of Noah. And furthermore, the apparent purpose of leaving the ark, the imperative to procreate, the third aspect of God's tripartite command, is wholly neglected in the response stage. In fact, Noah's segregated linear emergence from the ark and neglect of the animals seems calculated to negate the procreation repopulation imperative. And soon after, Noah's deterioration accelerates when he debases himself, becomes drunk and naked, signifying his interest to withdraw from the world and give up. And it's hard to blame Noah after witnessing the destruction of the world and losing friends, business partners, and extended family members. The trauma of seeing a world destroyed must be overbearing. And what we learn from here is that Noah succeeds in the realm of survival, but he's not able to succeed in the area of renewal. When faced with the challenge and opportunity of rebuilding a broken world, he's unable to even follow God's command and he loses confidence in himself. Noah was more of a static personality, which was a strength before the flood in that he was able to resist the influences and temptations of the generation. He was able to stick strongly to his righteous ways, but then that strength becomes a liability. He's not able to adapt, to be creative, to bounce back. Before the flood, he wasn't able to take the initiative even to save others, to reach out and to try to pray for them. And after the flood, 
He certainly doesn't have the creativity and adaptability to start again. And he squanders the opportunity of remaking the world. Perhaps this is why our patriarch is not Noah, but it's Avraham. After God asks Avraham to be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice, the verse says, Avraham awoke early in the morning and he saddles his donkey for the journey. And this is remarkable considering that Avraham was befuddled by the contradiction that God had previously promised Avraham a nation through Yitzchak and now wants him as a sacrifice. But with his confusion, with the feeling of the def defeat that he must have felt, it would have, been, it would have made sense for Avraham to sleep in, to wake up late as people do when they're feeling down. Yet Avraham arises early, indicating that he was committed to moving forward despite the body blow. And the same is true with Avram after the destruction of Sodom when his prayers are not listened to or he doesn't receive the response that he was hoping for to save the city. Avram wakes up early, moves forward with renewed energy without losing confidence. And he grows through those trials, through those challenges to become ultimately Avram Avinu. And so how do we respond to turbulence and changing times? Whether it's a flood or a destruction of Sodom or a pandemic, or the ups and downs, the squiggly lines of our lives. And Noah stands as a model of static righteousness, but there are limits to his righteousness. Our role model is Avraham, who teaches us not only the trait of surviving, but also the power of renewal. And with the world broken apart, we have what it takes to rebuild it. To rebuild requires resilience, which is the trademark of the Jewish people throughout the generations, from the depths of the Shoah, we demonstrated the adaptability, the courage, the resilience to reach the heights of Hakamat Medina and renew the spirit of the Jewish people. And Israelis have been known always for their resilience in dealing with terror and living in Eretz Yisrael from the days of Avraham until modern times. With the famine in Avraham's days and with all the challenges that we have, always requires resilience. And so in our times in 2020 and facing any challenges, we have to have confidence in ourselves we have to have faith in the God of Avraham. Let us learn lessons from Noah and be inspired by the model of Avraham to adapt, to be resilient, to grow through our challenges and rebuild. And when you have a strong community social network, that gives us that ability to draw strength from one another. And that gives us that sense of resilience in the face of any challenges. Let us rebuild by having confidence, but also by reaching out. Let us rebuild through chesed, by giving of ourselves to others and renewing our commitment to the people and the world around us. And may that world that is rebuilt and may we ourselves grow through the challenges and become stronger than ever. Shabbat Shalom.